Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we will continue with uh, what we, I have already left you all with our previous session. We have already learned about uh, the perceptron, right? Okay, did, did you all remember the steps of perceptron? Can you recall the steps? Yes, sir. Uh, initialize the parameters, the weights, any rate, and so on. Like that. Mm -hmm. What's that one? Mm -hmm. Step number two. Activation. Activation. Okay. What happened in activation? Alpha. We get the sum of the inputs multiplied with the weights mm -hmm. minus the threshold value, and then mm -hmm. we apply the activation function. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next step number three. Uh, is the weight training okay mm -hmm. weight training what happened in weight training we calculate the error okay, first you calculate the, error. the desired output with the actual output mm -hmm. okay good and then and then we get the delta weight by multiplying the alpha the learning rate the input and the error okay good and then, then we add the delta weight with the initial weight to get the new weight okay so you get the new weight, final weight, right? Yep. Okay, so the last one, the, the last step, step number four. Iterate until we have zero errors. Okay, all right. Uh, um, and then I've told you to do uh, an exercise on your own, right? So you can you can try it out uh, your own programming. Did you try it out? Yes, yes sir. Okay, yes, so sir. you should have already done the end operation and or operation and then I already told you to test out to do x3 right? right so you have another input here right did, yes, you, do the, did you do that what okay and Penata, have you tried exclusive or yes what happened if you try exclusive yeah. or would not converge all right so it would not converge so this is the problem all right so we want to learn the exclusive or we want our neural network to learn exclusive or why does uh, the neural network couldn't learn exclusive or because exclusive or is not a linear separable problem yes good okay in other words, uh, an easier way to say it is uh, exclusive for all is a non-linearly separable function, okay? So you cannot separate this linearly. Okay, tak boleh. So in order to solve this problem, okay, so uh, we are introduced with a multi-layer perceptron. Okay, so here is the explanation lah. So there's an explanation on multi-layer perceptron and all. You can read that. <clears throat> okay. So what is a multi-layer perceptron? So a multi-layer perceptron is a perceptron with more than one. Uh, sorry, more than two layers. Right. So usually we have the input layer here, and immediately we uh, our network uh, converge to the output layer. Right. So the simplest perceptron that we have already done is the two input and one output lah. So you get two layers, the input, sorry, and the output, right? So you only have two layers. But in a multi-layer perceptron, you have more than one, uh, sorry, more than two hidden, uh, two layers lah. We call it hidden layer. Why did I always tell you to remember? <coughs> Sorry. Why did I always tell you to remember the the steps of of uh, the perceptron? Because um, in back propagation, if you look into back propagation, so this is the explanation and all. You can read that later. So I'll uh, just go straight to the explanation, right? But Please have, have a look at it, uh, read it on your own. Um, it's good that if you read it, you, you will have some sort of idea on uh, how to do your own uh, multi-layer perceptron algorithm. Right, so the steps are the same. Uh, uh, back propagation or 
uh, we call it back propagation and some people call it multi-layer perceptron so same thing uh, in uh, this uh, notes that i've given to you okay the, the number of steps is similar right so you have four steps step one initialization step two activation step number three is speed training and step number four is iteration okay but of course the um setup or the processes inside each of the steps will be a bit different lah. okay it will be in unique to uh, this algorithm itself right so let's look at the first step initialization basically uh, we have already learned right so when i say initialization you know okay so we set up all the variables so the weights the thresholds are actually the variables sorry variables or the parameters of the neural network okay so these variables some of them are set up with a predefined value right so this is the predefined value lah. A random numbers uniformly distrib distributed as 2 point negative 2.4 until 2.4 divided by f so what is f so f is the total number of input of neuron in the network okay we'll discuss about this later but just bear in mind if you have a network that looks like this this is an example right so you have five inputs right one, two, three, four, five. So the input converge to one output, for example. So the five input is the f. So f equals to five. So the random number we divide by five. Okay. So this is again, this is just a suggestion. Okay. This is a suggestion um by the notes, right? By this author. But later, if you understand how uh, multi-layer perceptron works, you can actually create your own um, random number, right? So there's a lot of uh, random number ni bukan macam, not as simple as this, right? So there's a lot of way to generate random numbers depending on uh, different um, needs and usage. So, but for now, we stick with this one. Right, step number two is activation. Again, activation is the same thing. Um, we do the summation of input times weight minus threshold. So this is the dot product. Some some book use the notation y in x in depends, right? So it is applied to the sigmoidal activation function. So sigmoid looks like this one divided by one plus exponent to the power of negative x. So x is actually this value. Okay. Inilah yang you kira ni. This one. <coughs> Alright, however, okay, let's look at the design of the multi-layer perceptron so you have one perceptron here it's a threshold right and then you have another perceptron here so it's a different connection it's another threshold here and then both of uh, this neuron will pr produce an output right so it become an input to this neuron. So this neuron will have its own threshold value. And each of the connections between the neurons, we call it weights, right? If you remember, okay, there's a there's some sort of naming con convention how we name the the weights and all, right? Um, but for uh, learning purposes, right? So I'll just follow. Uh, the network uh, architecture we call this network architecture okay um, so the labeling of the neuron is one two three four five okay but 
if let's say you're doing programming so you have to start with index 0 and 1 this will be 0 and 1 this will be another 0 so the connection is of the weight will be weight 0 0 meaning that this neuron connects to this neuron this is the connection is right but we'll follow the the notes first right okay so I'm using the same notation one two three four five okay so the connection is of the weight is with one three with one four with two three weight two four right so how about this one weight Wait, what? Three, five. Three, five, good. Just to, to test whether you get the hang of it. This one? Five, four. Four, five. Four, five, four, five right? Not okay. five, four, right? So this value indicates this neuron. This value indicates this neuron. Okay, we, we have to do this carefully because we don't want to miscalculate, right? So this is threshold three. This is threshold 4 and this is threshold 5. All right. So the first activation happens at the hidden layer. So the we want to calculate the, the first activation here at neuron 3. So I call it Y3. Y3 means output at neuron 3. Okay. So output at neuron 3 is calculated as sigmoid. Summation of input times weight, right? So this this will be x1 and this will be x2. So if you look at the the notes, so the equation states that um, the activation is the sigmoid activation of the summation of input i times weight i j minus threshold j so what is the notation i and j means right so actually it means t this one is k j k and k so what does it mean it actually means the the uh, layers right so if i draw layers with index i j and k so now for neuron tree is the summation of input i times weight i j minus threshold threshold at, at j right so let j so again if i elaborate the equation sigmoid x1 right multiplied by weight 1 3 because we are calculating at neuron 3 this one y3 plus x2 times weight 2 3 minus threshold 3 can you get the hang of it? Yes, sir. All right, so let's try it up. So Y4, how do you calculate Y4? Sigmoid. X apa? XIJ. XIJ? No, it's XI. XIJ. X. Uh, XI? X apa ni? X1. X1. Times, wait mana? Uh, Wait. W one four. One four. Good. One four plus x paper. X two. X two times w w w w w w w w two four. Good. Minus, Minus threshold four. Threshold four. Good. Mm -hmm. See, you have gotten the hang of it. All right. <clears throat> now, um, of course, it might is one. Remember, 1 divided by 1 plus exponent to the power of negative x. And this x is actually this whole calculated value. So this will be the x, right? 
Okay, if you manage to calculate this, you you get to use your calculator and all. And if you manage to calculate this, right, so you get one value for y3 and y4, meaning an output at activation at y3, activation at y4. Now, this is the activation at the hidden level, right? So meaning that um, the output is not yet concluded. So the final activation, okay, or the final output is sigmoid. Okay, now the output will become the input for the next um, layer, right? So now this will be y y three, okay, because it's an input here y three multiplied by v three five. Plus, guess why? Y four. Y four good. Times wait. Wait four five. Four five, right? Minus threshold five. Threshold five. Good. That's it. So when you calculate this, you get the actual output y k. So y k is y five lah. Okay. Like this one. So meaning that you manage to finish the second step. So the, the difference between uh, a multi-layer perceptron and a perceptron is that uh, for perceptron, you, you only have one uh, converging activation. But in a multi-layer perceptron, you have more than one layers, right? So you, you have to do layer by layer. You have to finish one layer first and then you go to the next layer, right? Hey, this is where it gets a bit more complicated, right? With training. So weight training uh, is uh, the sub process of weight training um, is is a bit more complex than uh, a perceptron weight training. Okay, so previously in in perceptron, what what do we do? What do we do in perceptron during weight training? We get the error first. Okay, error is calculated right. Mm -hmm. So error is calculated as y desired minus y actual right. So what is y desired? The output that we want. The output that you want, yes. The labels, right? Yeah, the labels, yeah, sure. The labels. Of course, lah, the label is the output that you want. The labels come from data, kan? Yes, sir. Okay. So how about y actual? It is from the activation function. In the step activation. One. All right, the output mm -hmm. of the network. Yeah, but yes. Of ANN. So this is the output that is produced by the network. This is the the output that it's supposed to produce from the labels. Uh, however, in multi-layer perceptron, okay, let's look at the figure. Okay, the labels should be here, right? At the output. So imagine if we want our output to be to produce one, the network must produce one, all right? So the problem would be that we can calculate error here. Okay, the error will be calculated as y desired minus y actual. However, we cannot calculate the error at the hidden layer because the hidden layer doesn't have any labels. Okay, so the hidden layer is called a black box because we don't know we wouldn't know what is the a supposedly output that will produce here in order to produce the right output here. So this will only be adjusted and calculated by the, the network itself. So the network will adjust this accordingly through its experience and all. Uh. So they have to look into the data first and then adjust the weight accordingly and produce the output based on whatever that we want uh, the final output to be produced. Sorry, Sorry. Is that right? <coughs> Sorry, sorry for that. Uh -huh. 
Let me let me change my place. Yep. Hold on. Uh, okay. Amirul, Amirul, kau record tak? Kau tengah berapa terus? Sorry, terkeluar sekejap. You, are, you, are you all uh, still there? Yes sir. Yes sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, did, did the sound disturb you? Kuat tak bunyi tu? No, not really. It's okay sir, we understand. Apa tu, neighbor saya still renovate. Saya ingat kan dia dah tak buat dah. Sebab senyap je tadi. Tiba-tiba je. Okay, so where are we? Let me continue. Alright. So tadi tu saya, I'm explaining um, that uh, you cannot calculate the error at the hidden level. Right. Okay. Hai. Tutup pintu kan? Dengar. Alright, so uh, you cannot calculate the error at the hidden level because uh, at the hidden layer, um, we don't have labels, right? So we don't know what's what's the correct output in order to produce um, the desired output here. So what we we have to distribute the weight, right? So the uh, activation of the neural network is called forward propagation. Because uh, the signals, the values that, that is calculated and activated is propagated forward through the network. Okay. Now we want to back propagate the error, right? So that the error is shared between all the neurons in the neural network. So how do we do this? So let's look at uh, step number three with training. So first step is to calculate the error. This one. This is the first step. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So we calculate the first step. Error is calculated as y desired minus y actual. Same. Same thing like Sceptron. So this shouldn't be a problem for you. Okay, the next step would be to calculate the error gradient. Okay, so error gradient here is calculated as the output the output of the, the output of the network times 1 minus output times the error at that particular output okay in in the book shows one neuron right neuron 5 so what happens if you have more than one neuron like this one so you have a forward propagation of uh, activation and then later we want to back propagate our error one two three four four five six so the 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 input is um, propagated through the network 
to produce the output, right? Okay. So if you have two output neuron, you need two labels. You must have two labels, right? So all output of the neural network must have a label so that you can calculate the error. So error again is calculated y, y, y desired minus y h -bar. So you have error five and error six. Okay. So in order to to update the weight here, weight three five and so on, weight four five, you need to find the error gradient first. So what is error gradient? Error gradient is how the error is back propagated through the network. Okay, first we calculate the error gradient at five. So error gradient at five is calculated as easy, very straightforward. Y five. Um, <coughs> plus, eight, eight, no plus, eight, is multi, multiply, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. Sorry. Multiply. <coughs> All right. Okay, Y5 times weight, the weight. Yeah, sorry. The type of weight here, I think. Just below, say. Y5 times 1 minus Y5 times error. Type of weight. Okay, times 1 minus Y5 times er error. Error at where? Error five. Because six has its own error. Right? So how do you cal calculate error gradient six? Turn it. Y six. Y six times minus or times one, one minus, minus y six. Times error e six. Error six. Good. Okay, but in the example in the book is you it's only consisted of of two uh, one neuron right i like to show this example because it's uh, it kind of prepare you for a more complex uh, examples later right <clears throat> okay uh, that be being said right when you you manage to calculate the error gradient you can move on to calculate the um weight correction which is the delta weight lah. So the delta weight again is the uh, different marginal difference of the weights, right? So you have alpha times the input times error gradient. So this is actually an input at the hidden. In sorry, should be this one is input at hidden or the activation at hidden right so this is the error gradient at the output see keep the, the index k and index j this should indicate um, the layer which layer right so uh, you shouldn't get confused right although, although um, of course when you look at the equation the first time uh, look at this equation for example makes your weight spin right you probably got a headache by looking at the equation and all but <clears throat> actually it's it's quite uh, straightforward but it can be confusing i know all right so this is manageable right so you, you again we calculate the uh the weight change equals alpha alpha is a constant right times the, the input at the hidden and times at the gradient. By now, uh, do you have any question? If you have any um, uh, question that you want to ask, please don't worry about it. You can always interrupt me, right? But I hope you understand, lah, right? Never mind. I, I'll finish this first. So step number four is of course to update the final weight so this is the final weight for weight j k so now you would be able to update the weight here weight three six weight four six 
to know all the four weights here uh, are able to be updated based on the error gradient. Don't don't use the error anymore. So you won't use the error. You use the error gradient, right? But in order to calculate the error gradient, you need the error first. All right, <clears throat> and then the the error is back propagated through the neuron because in order to update the weights here, you need to know the error gradient at three. Uh, error gradient at three, ni kita tak tahu kan? So how to calculate error gradient at three? Input kan? Betul tak? Eh, sorry. Bukan input. The output at 3, right? Output at G. Y, G. Y, G. So, Y, G is 3. Y, 3 lah. Am I right? Mm, times 1 minus Y, 3. Okay. Times. Okay, now. You don't have the error. Error tu kita tak ada. Kan? So, Kita nak pakai apa kat sini? Uh, so yang ini is the summation of error gradient at k times with g k. Okay. I hope uh, yang ini cukup nak tunjukkan. Still got, got some space left here. Alright. So let me show you again. Okay, yang ini yang you kena hati-hati tau. Please be very careful. See see how the weight converge. Now, the weight converge differently uh, from forward propagation and backward propagation. Because in forward propagation, uh, you do activation at 5 by multiplying neuron 3 times weight 3-5 plus neuron 4 times with 4, 5 because the uh, apa tu, the, the output is propagated forward uh, it's a forward propagation but for backward propagation now you cannot use this uh, some some people use this way okay that's where you get the wrong answer so you need to know uh, when to use this so the summation of this neuron neuron 6 multiply with weight 3, 6, uh, this one. So, it's actually error gradient 5. Okay, who can help me? Error gradient 5 times weight. Which one? 3, 5, is it? Weight, come in. Is it weight 3, 5? Yes, weight 3, 5. Can I put okay. weight 3, 5? Because neuron 5 is connected to neuron 3. We are calculating error gradient at neuron 3 alright plus error gradient at 6 6 times weight 3 6 weight 3 6 good so that's it okay so okay. for this example you need to so do this calculation first okay and then you do this now you can calculate the error gradient so actually you, you need to finish this first then you can finish the whole equation to get the answer for error gradient 3 so same goes with error gradient 4 we don't have much space here so um what i'm going at is that uh, you have to be very careful all right sorry you have to be very careful at um selecting the correct uh, weight and all uh, so that we don't make uh, mistakes right so this will be step number five, step number six, and step number seven. Right? So after finishing the error gradient, it, this, this will be easy lah, because it's alpha times input times error gradient. And then this is uh, just the, the, the current weight plus the weight change so to get the final weight. Okay, so this should be easy for you. Uh, but the the how do I say it? the climax of the algorithm is here. Uh, this is where it gets a bit um, how do I say it? Uh, a bit complicated. Okay, because you need to do this first, this part first, 
then you can get to do the rest of uh, the equation. Okay. Right, step number four. The last step is iteration. Uh, increase iteration P by one, go to step number two. Basically, it's the same thing. Okay. Um, let me uh, run something. Uh, sorry, Jeff. Because I need to show you. Okay. We are going, uh, the program runs uh, a bit slow. So I need to execute the program first before I explain it to you. File open. Uh, Um, where am I? Okay, okay. set number four iteration. All right, even though iteration seems very um, easy and straightforward uh, to be remembered, right? Of course, siapa yang tak ingat step number four ni, saya potong ni markah. Kalau markah ada dua, tak ingat, saya tak nak bagi. Uh, saya cancelkan kalau you jawab jawapan you salah. Sebab it's very easy for you to remember. Okay. All right. Um, so supposedly all the um, algorithm, the process and the steps in the algorithm that we have already just learned just now should be able to learn the um, XOR function, right? So the aim of of creating a back propagation algorithm is of course to solve the non-linearly separable function. Kita nak solve problem yang ini. Okay, let me share my screen. How do I share? Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Right, so similar to the perceptron program that I've shown you earlier, right? But I didn't use this one. Lah. This one is the old activation. I didn't use this. Uh, supposedly, I, I I need to create uh, apa tu? a sigmoid activation algorithm, as uh, function, sorry, that returns a float value. But I didn't. I immediately apply that the sigmoid function to the um the syntax right but it works the same way right um so basically uh, it is very similar to my perceptron program so this is just an initialization of weights initialization of variables right and these are the values that we're going to learn Okay, so you'll, you're going to learn the XOR operation, which is the label of the output is 0, 1, 1, 0, right? Let me close this. Okay, I've already executed this program. It's running in the background here. So if I uh, stop it for a while. Okay, now uh, the program has already reached uh, 5,903 epoch. And as you can see, um, the actual output of the network is almost zero here, almost zero, almost one, almost one, and almost zero. So it tries to, it tries to uh, produce the correct output, which is this is the actual output zero one one zero, and there's an error here. Okay, so in in uh, perceptron previously the stopping condition. Let me run this first. The stopping condition is um, all iteration must produce zero error, right? If you remember, but in a back propagation or in a multi-layer perceptron, it's, it's a bit different, right? So your uh, stopping criteria is based on the sum of squared error. So what is sum of squared error? I'll explain after this. So a sum of squared error where 
um, while the program runs, initially the error is quite big. I didn't show you earlier on, but never mind. I can run it again because it uh, take a lot of time to run. So I uh, I just run this earlier on. So later I run it again to show you that the error will uh keep on decreasing right supposedly the error should decrease bit by bit so this is our stopping condition right so our error must be lesser than 0 0.001 right but this is not uh, a, a simple error calculation so we call this sum of square error so what is sum of square error i'll, I'll explain it later right and we have another stopping condition which is the loop must be lesser than 100,000 epoch, right? Meaning that if the program runs for too long, uh, might, say, might as well I stop uh, the learning because it, it won't learn. I, I will assume that you won't learn after 100,000 epoch. So this is just a suggestion, right? So you, you will have your own uh, stopping criteria later, right? If you do your research, you do your uh, network training and all, so you would have your own stopping uh, condition. All right. <clears throat> so uh, what I did here is similar to what uh, we already done in Perceptron, but the activation is a bit different. Lah. And the looping also have, uh, I think, I don't know, I, I only did one loop because uh, all I, did it one by one, calculate the activation at three, calculation the activation at four, and then you calculate the activation at five. So this is the actual output. Mind, I'll explain again in our next class, right? So basically, it's the same thing that I've just explained just now. It, all the um, algorithm, the steps is translated into the uh, C++ syntax. Okay, so this is not an efficient uh, perceptron, uh, sorry, an efficient backpropagation algorithm because it, uh, I did this to uh, explain, I did this to, to show you uh, how the calculation is done and all. And I did this back uh, 10 years before. It's an old program of mine uh, for the sake of uh, explaining to my students. Lah. So basically, it's the same as the perceptron previously, but uh, a bit more complex because um, I'm doing uh, more work lah in this algorithm. All right. So as the looping continues, right? Kalau kita tengok kat sini kan? See? Now, if you notice the sum of squared error is 0 0.0047. So this value will reduce later, right? So we'll see the re reduction of this value. So our aim is that we want to get a very low value. So if you look into the notes again, uh, I'm using the same um, values, the same weights that is uh, suggested by the exercise. This is supposed to be the uh, a random value. Okay, yang ni semua sepatutnya random. Tapi for the for the sake of doing this exercise, again, the value is put at a constant, right? So, saya pun buat yang sama lah. Just to run this experiment, I did, uh, I inserted all this value with the same value. And then when I run the program, I put the same stopping criteria, which is uh, uh, the sum of square error must be lesser than this value lah. Must be less than what? So what is uh, some square error? Uh, some as error similar to what the name is. Okay, so you simply square the error, okay. error kuasa dua kan? And then you sum it up. Campur kan semua. So you get the sum of square error. Okay, and then we have another type of error which is the mean of square error. Uh, dua ni ada kegunaan dia. So, sometimes, okay, ada masa-masa you tak sesuai. You cannot use sum, sum of square error. You have to use mean square error. So, mean square error is the sum of square error divided by the number of sample. 
sample so how many sample do we have guys kita kita ada berapa sample eh yeah, kita kita bagi 8 ni eh? 8 uh, kita ada 4 saja this one 1 2 3 4 uh, don't get confused uh, this is also very important. This is the basics, right? So this is the number of samples, and this is the number of input. Uh, input input you two. So kalau input you three, boleh jadi lapan. Kan x three boleh jadi lapan. Okay, untuk binary. Okay, sometimes if your combination of input is not binary, you get a data from from outside. Alright, so Contohnya macam the diameter of uh, width and uh, height of um, apa tu uh, dimension of fruits, for example. So you get two dimension uh, measurements, the width and height. All right. So of course the dimension won't be as simple as zeros and one. Ten betul tak? Ada tak buah limau? Dia 1 cm kali 1 cm Lepas tu you, bila you tanam semua buahnya akan menghasilkan uh, Size yang sama. Is it possible? No right? You have a range of values So that range of values Will be your samples lah So kalau sample you ada 100 is 100 sample Right but your parameter still stays the same It's two parameter yeah. Input for height and Width Pump Okay. Alright. So with that being said, right again, um, mean square error is calculated as sum of square error divided by the number of samples. So kenapa kita kena pakai mean square error lah nanti? Next time I explain. But for now, uh, just bear in mind that there's two error, sum of square error, mean square error. Okay. Okay. Uh, so our uh, apa tu? program here, kalau kita tengok kat sini si tadi dia 0.004 kan now it's, dia dah jadi 0.002 so yeah, it seems that the value has uh, been reduced to a lower value lah so it would take some time because I I uh, apa tu, I keluarkan all the output on every iteration so it takes some time for the uh, network to learn but XOR is the most basic right? you should learn like few seconds sebenarnya if you do the if you do kalau you tak cari kan you ubah program ni dalam python make it more efficient uh, and then you don't have to output you uh, apa tu each iteration you output the final one so it should take around few seconds for the network to learn right. yang ni dia ambil masa sikit lah because saya nak explain kat you guys, saya nak tunjukkan uh, <coughs> how the program runs and all alright uh, while waiting for uh, the back propagation to learn let's look at uh, the back and the notes kalau kita tengok, ni dia dah ada dah uh, exercise, ok uh, with explanation, so you can do, uh, you can try out for one epoch. You don't have to try for more than one epoch because uh, you you won't be able to uh, finish the uh, finish the calculations. So right? it takes a, a lot of iteration and epochs. Even in the final, you you would only have to do one one ep one uh, iteration not one epoch okay one epoch pun banyak one epoch meaning you have to do four iteration okay so in this example uh, there's only one iteration right so you can check out whether your calculation is correct mm -hmm. or not um uh, you do the calculation first on your own and then uh, check whether the answer is the same as the textbook or not so if the answer is the same, then I think uh, you have already gotten the hang of it, right? So you, I, I want you to try that later. Okay, 
uh, now uh, see our error is is converging to 0 0.0010 okay a, a bit more so let's wait sir yes um referring to our book at mm. y3 y3 here mm -hmm. okay so we set the bias to equals to negative one yes based on the yes. diagram yes so at the exponent so one times 0 0.5 is the input times with the weights plus with the uh weight from yes the this one is the bias this one right plus one is the bias yes. so why is y4 the bias is plus one and not negative one um let me see this device is negative, right? Yeah, that one is negative. Okay, so um, in this particular uh, equation, mm -hmm. uh, it reverts back to the earlier um, equation that I've gave you. So it's actually plus... Plus bias times... Plus bias times, yes. Plus bias times, times the weight. All right? Okay. Okay. So that's so, why we get negative 1 times 0 0.8. Yes. Okay. So this this should should resolve your uh, question. And then at the y four it's plus one. Shouldn't it be also at negative one? Y four is plus one. Okay. Why is plus one? Because let's look at the threshold four. So threshold four, see? Oh, it's threshold negative. four oh, okay. is a, it's a negative yes. value. So immediately it changed to a positive lah. Okay, okay. That's okay. where I missed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no problem. And okay. So I reviewed the this page. So for Y5, mm -hmm. the formula for the sigma activation is 1 over 1 plus the exponent to the power of negative X, right? Yes. So why is negative 0 0.5250? Why is it negative there? Y five. This one is out. it. So your answer, hold on. Your answer is uh, what? What do you get? So the Y three is zero point five two five zero, and then five two five zero. Okay, this one. And then in the function, uh, there's a negative value. A negative here is it? Uh, so, yeah. So let's look at the the wait wait um. Wait, three five. Three five. Oh, see? there. One negative one point two. Oh, okay, I see it. Okay. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. Should, should answer your question, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. Nope. Sorry, right. missed that one. Okay, never mind. No problem. Okay, and then if you look um, for the area gradient, even for this one, it's, it's quite easy because, because you just uh the error gradient at five is calculated as um this value right so it's actually the error right so that's it yep. you don't have you you um you only have one uh output neuron so you have only one error so remember if you have a gradient six you need to calculate your error will We'll have two errors, so error five and error six. Okay, so that's one thing that I want to highlight. And then here, right, if you can see, it's error gradient five times with three five. So it's it's not actually a summation of error gradient at g. Uh, sorry, error gradient at k times with j k. Right. So there's there's no summation because you only have one neuron at the output layer. Okay, Bole. Um, yeah, I think I got that. Okay. Uh, so I, I I want to remind you because um it, uh, actually there's one time in the final exam um the output is two two neuron. So uh, when you do this exercise, you don't you don't realize that there's there's a possible of plus gradient six times with three six uh, that that's where uh, most of the students cannot answer at this point you have the equation but but 
still because you rely on the exercises so you can't actually answer it properly right so i know you want you all uh, have understand the problems and all but of course um in order for you to understand you have to do several several exercises okay so that you you understand how it, how it works how it really works <coughs> right so let me see it should converge anytime at 50,000 50, epoch if I'm not mistaken. So it should converge anytime now. Um, by the way, while waiting, do any of you in the class have any question? Let's go then. Uh, sir, last week you yes. told us to do the three inputs. Yes. So, uh, may you managed to do that, right? It managed to converge for the OR operator using the okay. step activation function. But for the AND operator, if I use step, it doesn't, it doesn't want to converge. Yeah, I so I have to use split point. And then okay. I have to round it up. Only then I managed to get it. Is that how? Yeah, yeah, you did, because when see when, when you get the hang of it uh, of how the perceptron works you need to do some changes on the parameters uh, like the uh, learning rate how the uh, weights are set up how the activation function is used all that will affect the learning of the new network so it, it doesn't mean um, when we immediately run our program according to the algorithm itself it should learn properly no we we wouldn't know uh, until we do the experiment that, that's the reason why i need you to do the exercise right so that you can see oh okay if i did this what will happen and then you change the parameter and all the network will learn differently right the behavior of the network will be different right and uh, it's the same thing as uh, how uh, human learns. You have uh, two different person with two different way of learning, right? Maybe uh, one person may learn faster than the other one, but uh, the other person will remember uh, better, right? And the one that re that learn faster will have a very short memory, for example. So. It's the same thing, all right? So the the unique uh, parameters that you set up for the perceptron or back propagation will will be a unique model to itself. So you have to record when you do when you do experiments and all, right? You have to record the parameters. So usually, if you do your thesis later, your research, if you um if you are interested in in using machine learning to solve your problem okay so it's finished <clears throat> so um you have to record all the parameters so that uh, it shows uh, how your experiments uh, will produce the output that you want right so in the, in our case here so uh, we want to learn the x or operation so this is the final sum of squared error. Okay, so let me input 0, 0. See, the output is 0. 1, 1. The output is almost 0. And if I put 1, 0, the output is almost 1. And if I put it as 0 and 1, the output is almost one all right so it, it won't necessarily be exact one okay some of your friends previously you know previous classes uh, asked whether uh, is, is it possible that that the actual output produced is exactly zero and exactly one yes it's possible but normally we will um we will be satisfied with this kind of value and and uh, for more complex problem usually we don't tend to produce an exact value of zero and one because later uh it, you will have different problem 
And I'll, I'll explain that later in our next class. All right? So any question before I end Absolutely. our class? Thank you. No questions for me. Yep. Okay. How about dress of the class? No questions, sir. Okay. So I think that's all for today. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you uh, have a good fast today. All right. Uh, selamat berbuka nanti. Okay. So that's it. That's it for today. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.